Yeah, so in this session, it's a continuous of our previous session on the GL interface. So last time we just discussed about, you know, like how do you perform a single file, right? Like we just discussed about how do we perform the, I mean, loading of the data of a single file. But now today what we do is we'll try to consider that we'll get multiple files. And based on that, like mm. uh, how do we process those multiple files? So this, you know, like uh, the thing is like, uh, this is one of the easiest approach, you know, like uh, you may have multiple requirements. You know, we can't say exactly like, you know, whether you get a single file or a multiple file, what, it, what will be the periodicity of file, right? So that's the reason what we do is in this today's approach, what, we, what we'll discuss is like, uh, we'll just consider that you'll, your file will start with a particular naming convention. And what we do is we'll schedule mm. a program which will read all the files a particular interval and then it will process all those files. So what we do is in today's yes. approach, we'll discuss about Unix shell script, SQL loader and PL mm. SQL. Like, again, the SQL loader and PL SQL, what we have designed, we'll be using, reusing them. The only concentration is okay. on that, like uh, how do we use, make use of the shell script to read multiple files. Yes. So this approach you can use anywhere, you know, generally like uh, maybe this is now we are, discuss, we are discussing today about interface, but the same logic can apply to a number of places wherever you have it. To, to read a multiple set of files okay okay so okay. unix unix script always helps out like uh, designing these kind of you know some operating system specific functionalities yes okay so so basic thing is like why are we discussing unix because generally like uh, any of the oracle e business servers whenever any client in installs ebs or ebs they always choose unix as a server they will never go with windows hmm. I never come across Windows yes. Server as of now. Until unless it is not mm. production, you may have a Windows Server. Now in our case, it's a Windows Server. The server which I'm using is a Windows Server. Of course, like uh, okay. it's not. I mean, it's a Windows, but again, you know, like internally, what they have done is like uh, you have virtual machine, right? So again, it's like Unix, yes. Unix box only. If you observe, like I'll be working on a Unix shell script, right? So it's a Unix box only, not Windows. Okay. Uh, it's like virtual machine kind of uh, infrastructure they have maintained now. Anyways. VMware like that. Yeah, VMware. Hmm. Okay. So let me go through the code. So what we do is like, I'll just, have you ever worked on the shell script or never? Uh, never, but uh, having some commands knowledge, I having that's it. That should be fine. So what we do is like, uh, let me tell you, see, hmm. shell script is for the Unix. Uh, shell script, sorry. <clears throat> it's for the purpose of Unix. And in Windows, it's yes. called batch, batch programming in Windows. Yes. Okay. Batch. And the file extension is .bat in Windows and it is .sh in Unix. Unix, yes. In, in, in Unix, you'll have a lot number of flavors and there's something called shell. Like uh, you have a con shell, ban shell. I don't remember mm -hmm. the exact name, CSH, something like that. You'll have a different mm -hmm. types of shells. Okay. Hmm. So why I'm saying uh, telling about the flavors because some set of commands like 90% it will work perfectly. Only thing is you just you may need to change the syntax a little bit in some of the different shells. It depends upon your client environment. Okay, that's the reason. Okay. So what we do is okay. just open the putty. Okay. Yeah. So let me increase. Okay, so in the normal environment, you may not get your Apple manager password, okay? So for your client environment, what they do is like, uh, you'll be having a Unix account and we, we just need to log in with that. There is no need for you to use Apple manager account. APPL, MGR, generally it is used by DBS. So now what we do is let us say if you want to try to practice shell, first of all, you know, like what we do is like, you can't just go with the direct registration of your program, right? Always you'll be designing some samples then based on that you'll be going with, right? So you can save your shell, oh. your save, you can save your shell script any place, but if at all, if you want to register your unique shell script as a concurrent program, then that should be in a bin folder of your appropriate top. Now what we okay. do is let us say I'll go with FND. Now this one mm -hmm. and bin, if you see, if you see here, there are a lot like other, you'll find some set of shell scripts. Yeah. Can you see PROG or dot SH, something like this? Yeah. Dot SH. Yes. Yeah. So if at all, if you want to register your shell script as a concurrent program, the file extension should be dot PROG or let us say if you just want to okay. practice your shell script, you can, it can be dot SH also. Okay. Okay. Uh, for registration only dot PROG extension. Yes. yes. What yes. about SH uh, for 
SH you cannot register. SH is only for your practice. If at all, if you just want practice. to write some programs and you want to validate, then you can just go with SH. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But if you want to register, then sure. it has to be dot pr. Dot prop. Yeah. Okay. okay. So as of now, let us go with some samples. Then based on that, we can proceed further. Sure. <clears throat> Excellent. Hello dot sh. Okay. So hmm. uh, generally, yes. you know, we have to follow this particular syntax, like a dot bin shell. We generally call it as bin shell. Hmm. Okay. And then just followed by sample echo. Hello shell. That's it. Yes. And now, what you can do is like just move your file to the appropriate location in the server. And move in text mode. Make sure that you should be. You have to move in text mode only. Okay. Yes. Now. Yeah. List. Okay. Yes. So I, I think we have to move to F and the top slash yeah, change directory bin folder bin. Yes. Okay. And now here it is. Yeah. It is giving R W hyphen again R all these things right. So generally it's like right. yeah. It is user group other. So user is having read write okay. permission, group is having read only permissions, uh -huh. others are having only read only permissions. What we have to do is change mode, chmod triple mm seven. -hmm. Yeah. I'll just give it to total permissions. Now just see the permissions. Now it will be rwx for all the people. Yes. Okay. If at all, if you want to execute initial script, at least it should have seven four four or seven zero zero. It's mm -hmm. like you know. It's like you know. You have to, if you are aware of this one, binary stuff, binary thing. Okay. So here, four to one. Three digits, right? So three digits. So yeah. you know, like uh, yeah, that's how it will get summed up. What is triple seven? That. Triple seven means. This one. Change mode triple seven. Yeah. Now R W X, right? So you need to sum up four plus two plus one seven. So for this one, what is the value for these three for initial user? What is the what is the thing you want to give it? If you just give five, what will happen is just observe here. You can easily understand. Now I'll just give seven double zero. Just observe what will happen. Yeah. Can you see seven double zero zero? Yes. So for others, it became zero. Yes. Now let us say if you give. Seven four four, nothing but for for user it will be RWX and for others it will be only read only permission. Read only permission. Can you see? Yes. RR. Now let us say if you want to give executable permissions, then what you can do? If you want to just give only executable permissions, you can just give seven one one. Hmm. Or maybe let us say if you want to give it as read and execute, then I can give five five. Like may I get these uh, numbers uh, examples like some content on that seven five five if I give seven five seven double five read yeah, write x like no, that. No, there is nothing to remember r w x that's it just sum up accordingly okay r stands for r -W -X, four okay. yeah r w stands yeah two zero r stands for four it two okay. power two bars power of two that's okay. it okay yeah it's binary stuff okay it's a, like a binary okay. convention. Two power zero, two power one, two power two. Okay, okay. Sure. Okay, so now just if you want to execute, you can just try sh, xx, and, and it doesn't require xh. Just mention dot. Hmm. That's it. Just mention dot followed okay. by your shell script name. So until unless it is having okay. until unless your program is having executable permissions, it will not allow you to ex. It will not allow you to execute. So there is no compilation. Okay. It's just total interpretation. Interpretation. Like once you execute, you'll get the output. There is no compile and running kind of thing. A single okay. step only. Direct executable stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So like uh, I'm not getting de in detail of the shell script, but I'm just telling you general how the shell script works. So you know like uh, maybe you can just brush up your knowledge or just learn some content on this one. So now what we want to do is okay. see like if you if you are aware of MS DOS like a like a much of the Unix is enough for you. 
if you know ms dos okay. in the ms dos you have this thing right cd md uh, and like, uh, yeah D I R, right these yes. better things like a cp right and there is other order. copy yeah copy move you have right and delete you have, have rmd i have something like that yeah remove directory i have these commands knowledge little bit so it's similar in the unix also just maybe you know you like a, in, you may have mkdir or maybe instead of dir we have ls yeah list yeah a little bit different okay okay now what we do is like uh, we'll just design our shell script and if you want to register the shell script we'll just see the other example how do we register the shell script as a concurrent program then we'll get into our interface okay so, okay so Okay, everything is same. Wrong. Okay, dot proj. Yeah. Yes. In the bin right. folder of uh, so appropriate top text yes. file. Yes, bin folder of the appropriate top. Okay. Now the extra thing what you require is like whenever you want to register any this one shell script as concurrent mm -hmm. program, the first thing is it should have a file extension dot proj. Another one you require yes. is you have to create soft link. You need to create soft link. Okay. okay. So for that we have to use mm -hmm. a command called ln, ln minus, ln hyphen s. This uh, command we have okay. to use it. Okay. So let me mm -hmm. just get that. We'll get lot number of examples. Yeah, this one. Hmm. First thing is just give triple seven permission. Don't don't forget this. XXIF. Yes. Okay. What? After that. Program name. Ln minus F. Ln minus S. Okay. And just and give this this top. give this one. No no not that one. Give this one. Fnd top mm -hmm. slash bin slash fnd cp esr followed by your program name. Ln minus ln hyphen s. Okay, then followed by FND top bin. This is there is a seeded program you have to mention. FND CP ESR. FND FND concurrent top program. Only. Any top. Uh, Sorry, come again. Hello. Yes. It's FND top only. Any our custom top also. Hello. See this one. This is, a, this is a command. This is a total command. You have to mention like this only. Okay. This is a command. This is your this is your concurrent program. Yeah. yeah. You have okay. to execute this particular step from the location where you have copied your PROG file. Yeah, that's what. If I have been moved this PROG file in our custom top, then instead of FND top, we can keep our custom no. top name, right? No. Why why are okay, you talking? This is standard one. One minute. Is this program available? Yes, is, is it a seeded program or custom program? FND CPSR is a seeded program or custom custom it, program? See, it's seeded program. Standard one. Standard programs yes. are available in the FND top bin folder. This okay. one. This, this is one of the thing which is available in standard in the bin. Uh, what is a standard one? So what I'm saying is. Okay. So we are telling mm -hmm. that we are telling to system that like I have a custom program which is available in this location. Here I am not mentioning the location because I am already in this particular location. Let us say. I'll, okay. Let me give you other way. It's, I think it got executed. So now here, what I'm doing is, what is my present working directory? Just see this first. My present working yeah. directory is in yeah. the FND bin folder. Okay. So now what we are yes. doing, we yes. have to create soft link of your program okay. to this F, this FND CP ESR. So what we have to do is, the command is ln hyphen s followed by this FND CP ESR and mention your Location of your concurrent program. I mean nothing but our PROG file. Wherever it is, just mention okay. the appropriate path. That is what I'm telling, trying to tell you. 
Okay. Okay. You can execute this command from anywhere. If you are executing from the same location, then he doesn't need to mention the path, right? Yes. So till this part, you have to follow for everything. This path is same for okay. everything. I okay. can just say standard command, simple. Yeah. This is your custom stuff. Yes. Okay. Without okay. without file extension, without file extension. Yeah. Okay. Now here, if you observe yeah. in this location, just observe here. Can you see? Okay. Where is that? Yeah, that one only. No, it has to show soft link, right? It has to show. Soft link. Yes. Are we in the same location? Yeah, if any top bin, XSI first. Okay, let me show you like this. Well, let's. Mm, something wrong. I don't think so. Can you see here? Can you see the shortcut? Yes. This is how it has to create. It has to create a shortcut like this. Then only it is correct. Until unless you don't. Yeah, if you, yeah. see, can you see? For everything, I have a shortcut. Yes. Yes. Mm. So then, what we have executed is not correct. Something wrong there. P R O G. What happened to that? Did I miss anything? The link should be named the same as the script without BROG extension. Put the link for your script in the same directory where the script is loaded. Uh, is this not executed the command? I think so. Okay, let me try again. Okay. Yeah, it was not executed, I guess. Okay. Else it will give issue. Yes, yes. Yeah. Can you see now? Yes. It not gave this extra easy. thing, right? This gave extra thing and it is providing that it is this particular our program is linked to this FND CPSR. So yes. generally this LN iPhone S is called soft link. It's called soft link. Yes. You can just check out what exactly soft link is all about. Okay. Now, once your program is done, the next step is the registration. Clear? Yeah. Okay. Now, the next thing is remaining is just as it is, the one which we have been doing so far. And currently, mm -hmm. I'm not taking any parameters as of now, okay? Mm -hmm. Here, I just need to mention application object library. Application object library. Shell, oh, sorry. Host, it will be host, okay? Yeah, host five. Yeah, host five. Program, and the output is it text. Doesn't matter even what do you mention, but it just generally it can be. It can generate only a text file, okay? So the basic thing is like when you get a requirement, which particular program, which particular one we have to choose always depends upon the output what you want, okay? Hmm. If someone says, you know, they want to have, they want to generate the data in XML format or maybe let us say some tab format, which one will you choose? Hmm. If they if they want to generate a file as an output in a tab separated format, which particular style have to choose? In tab format, in the, okay. Tab separated. In mm -hmm. using which particular style have to I mean to say like uh, what is the technical component have to choose whether I have to use PLC equal RDF report or XML report which one we have to I have to choose tab format means tab separated mm. do you know what do you mean by tab separated no I don't know that do you know tab command in the keyboard have you seen tab yeah yes yes that's what when you say let us say I have a column one tab Column two, this is a tab column separated, three. right? Yes, yes. That's it. Now I want the output in this fashion. How do you design that? Okay. That is what my question. Hmm. 
I have an output requirement in this fashion. How will yes. you generate? Uh, it didn't work on this one. I think uh, with the PLC code. <laughs> you, see, it's logical question, boss. He doesn't, you need, he did not work on all the things, right? So you can't just say that I don't know, I never worked, right? We just need to okay. analyze like, uh, see, it is similar to your CSV, right? What if, What is the difference here? If you want to generate CSV, That's how right. will you do it? We just require a PLC code program, right? PLC code program only, yes. Then we generated our we see do you remember that we generated our xml content using pl sql yes then using pl sql you can generate any textual content it doesn't matter whether it's separated by comma specific any dollar symbol or a tab okay. separate doesn't matter right yes 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 i got it that's it yeah okay So hmm. now register system administrator request group. Okay. That's it. Click on view output. Click on view log. Can you see? Hello shell script. Yes. So using shell script, you will just have only log, not even output. Output, yes. And okay. Log is the answer, yeah. Yeah, because generally we use shell script only for the processing. You know, like for, it's not a user interface output. This is not for the purpose of user yeah. interface output. Okay. Yes. It's more of about, you know, like calling a business logic and later program has to provide the appropriate output for the business user. That's how we need to do it. So now what we do want to do is like uh, here, the requirement is like coming to our interface topic. Hmm. So we have designed a GL interface, okay, in which we have hard coded the file name. Okay. Yes. We have hard coded the file name. Now what I want to do is. So assume that like you have a third party system called Ariba, which is providing GL files and they just say that our file name will just start with AGL. Okay. Hmm. With the file extension CSV. They just say that their program, their file starts with AGL followed by star. Hmm. The file extension is dot CSV and they are not sure about the number of files per hour. No idea. Okay. Okay, they say that they don't have any idea about number of files which will generate, but they want that our concurrent program should be processing the files per hour. Nothing but our concurrent yes. program should schedule one hour in a day. Nothing but each hour, our yeah. program has to run it. We have to schedule yeah. that. Okay, see, to schedule mm -hmm. any program is very easy. It doesn't need to write any technical stuff here. Very simple. So if we just well, like during submission, XXIF. So there is an option called the at least run, right? You know this, right? You can yes. just mention periodically, start, end it, okay? Every hour, mm -hmm. run it every hour, end it, that's it. Yes. Yes. Right? So this program now what will happen? Till 12 o'clock, for each hour it will run it, simple. Yes. Okay. And if you want to, if you mention yeah. minute, it will run for every minute. Yes. Okay. Pending. So it will be yeah. it will be pending until unless it reaches ten o'clock. Ten o'clock. Yes. Okay. So this is how you can schedule. Yes. Schedule right. Schedule. Can you? See? Yes. Schedule. Run the job. Periodic. 6 February to this one priority request start date. Okay, this is a schedule which we have mentioned. Okay, yeah, so yes. coming, coming back now, we want to design the program such a way that it will run our shell script will run for every hour and it has to read mm -hmm. all the files which are there in that location, process them, yes, and call the interface. That's how it has to work on. 
Yeah. Okay. So now let us yes. understand about file processing first. How do you read a set of files in a particular location? That is what we want to understand now. Okay. Yes. XXIF read files dot maybe either we can we can mention SH as of now because we just want to understand how it works. <laughs> Next followed by we need to I'll just let me get the thing here. So here yeah this is this simple for loop is enough for that. So here just mention I'll just I just mentioned some echo statements here. Now from which location you want to read it first thing is like uh, sorry we see one more important thing you have to understand is after reading the files after reading the files we would want to move them to another location because you will not understand which look which files are new and which look which files are old right still we can validate that yes. it is not that we cannot validate because using Unix you can validate the creation date update date you can read all the properties of a file. So what do you mean by properties of a file if you mm. observe in the Unix or maybe in the Windows. You'll just give properties, right? Created, mm. modified, access, yes. all things. The same properties you can get yes. in the Unix also using some set of commands. But you know, like uh, it doesn't need all those particular complex logic. What we can do is like once you read the files, we just want to move them to archive directory. So okay. this is assume that this is my archive directory. So here I need to mention to which directory. Let us say once I process my files, to which location you want to move it. So now let us say here in yeah. our bin folder, I'll just keep. I'll just create a new folder here. Uh, F7. I'll just say archive. Right? This is my archive directory. Make sure that you just mm -hmm. give triple permission, triple seven permission. Okay. This is my target. Mm -hmm. Yes. Target directory is equal to. I'll just mention this. After that. So yes. from which location you want to read the files now this is my target directory. So I want to iterate the loop nothing but in a given folder in a given folder read all the files which are starting with the file name ARB ARB or what we have considered AGL sorry AGL yeah. Ariba GL star dot CSV now for in yes. a given location now this F is nothing but your record you what you say it's a your record variable we can consider that way F in this particular location. So now F will hold all the file names. Okay. F will hold just a file name. Okay. Yes. As of now, I'll just yes. remove this. Yeah. I'll just remove this also. Okay. So for F in, okay, echo and copy into, I'll just mention copy into record, copy into target directory. That's it. Clear? Yes. Now, now what we do is just create. We'll just try to create some set of files with this this particular file name. Okay. Okay. Present working directory. How do you create a file? Sorry. How do you create file in Unix? Vim. Okay. Oh, Vim. Vim okay. is editor. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Just say. Change uh, copy to it okay. Okay. I'm just creating five files. Okay. Right? One, two, yeah. three, four, five. Yes. Now what's next? Copy your this program. Yes. Text mode. Text mode. Let us in the worst the case. Top. Let us in the worst case. Mm -hmm. If the transfer, the, if there is an issue in the transfer stuff. So just make sure that there's a command called DOS to Unix. DOS to Unix. To Unix. Okay. Okay. If you run this particular mm -hmm. command, what will happen is it will convert your DOS format data into Unix data. See, then this generally the issue with the why are we why are we stressing to move the content in the text mode because the end of line character end of line character in the Unix is different from the Windows or DOS. Mm -hmm. That is where yes. the issue comes. The end of line character yeah. in the Unix is different from the Windows. That is why when you move the content in text mode, this end of line end of line issue will not occur in the end of line. Whatever the content which you mentioned in the file that will not get trans that will not get changed. That's the reason we have to go with the text mode. That's only reason. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay. So now where are we? Yeah, this is our file, right? <clears throat> this is yes. our file. Now ls minus ltr. Okay. Is it having yes. is it having executable permissions? No. Change mode. Change mode triple triple seven. Triple, yeah. Or maybe yeah. either way it should work. Okay. Seven double zero I mentioned. Now xxif. That's it. Yeah. So now if you observe what it is telling. Okay. So it it is it could not find the file. It could not find the files in the location. Why? Because the location which I mentioned. The location in which I which I have mentioned was not having any files. I need to change that, right? This one. So here I mentioned another location. So just change this one, okay? That's what. Yeah. Okay. Now copy mm -hmm. the file again to yes. server. Text mode. Text mode. The other problem is like if you don't transfer yeah. the content in a proper mode, it will never give you that you have to transfer the content in text mode. It will never say that. That's other problem. That's the reason. <laughs> if you forget that, that's it. It will take time, much time, hours to find out the clue. Okay. Yeah. Now it read five mm -hmm. files, right? Reading files, and it clearly mentioned the total location of the file. Yes. Okay. Now go to the archive directory and just check it out whether it has copied or not. Refresh. Can you see five files? Yeah, five. Yes. Excel so files. now we are able to process all the files, right? Like uh, whenever you get it, make yeah. sure that the assumption is that the source system has to provide the files in a dynamic. I mean to say like uh, unique files. The file name should be mm. unique. If it passes the same content, simply it will replace, right? That doesn't make any sense. Yes. Make sure that yes. whatever they pass it, that has to be. They have to be They have to be unique. Yeah. Okay? Else they will replace their stuff. Yeah. Or what we can do is like okay. while copying the files. Another thing also we can do it while while copying the files. Whenever you process it in the archive directory, you can create one more directory. In that you can copy the files. That is also possible. Okay. You can just create here while copying the files. What you do is like you just create a directory here. Okay. Hmm. With a particular timestamp, and you can just move that. So here what we can do is. How do you read the? How do you display time here? This time, not this time. Time, right? Uh, hmm. Not this one. Could not recollect. One minute. I'll try to show you one more thing. Do you see any migration script here? You have code migration, Ajay. Something no, down. That is, yeah, it's not mine. Let me check it out. Okay. So can you just see timestamp is equal to what we can do is okay. Yeah. So now what we do is like a target directory here you mentioned, right? So target directory we can just mention. Okay. First of all, you have to create a directory, right? Yes. You have to create directory. Right. Understood? Yes. You create a directory. Yeah. And then mention that as your target directory, and then copy the files. That's it. Okay. Okay. Now here, if you mention, see this one. Yeah. Date is a command. So this is what I forgot. Date. That's it. Date will print date and time. 
and you can get the appropriate format of the date and time so now let us I'll just keep uh, create one more files agl 6.csv copy agl 6.7.csv okay it's not copying it that way okay now so what mm -hmm. we want to do is we want to whenever you process it make sure that you copy to a particular folder the time when you process okay so this will help out yes you to maintain that like uh, at what interval you have archived something like that hmm. right yeah and check out archive refresh timestamp uh, there's something wrong here. It created directly with the timestamp. I think we have to mention this way, this way, dollar. Okay. Mm -hmm. Understood. Okay. Okay. Mm. Let me remove this then. Okay, now it's empty, right? Now copy yeah. the file again. Let's see the difference now. Okay, refresh, refresh, got it? 2018, February yeah. 6, 951. Okay? Yes. Now in this one, you'll find all the CSV files. Yes. Okay, as of the thing is, we are just copying it. You know, the expectation is that if you, if you observe the bin folder, we still have our AGV files. We have to move it actually. As of now, I just copied it. If you observe, I just mentioned yes. CP, not MV. If you just mention MV, there's a different story. MV, I'll just yeah. mention MV, then see the see what happens. Mm. So this very small logic plays a very crucial role, and you can achieve very good complex functionality also. We just need to understand the very basic functionality, and then logically we have to implement. Right? All the mm. CSV files are gone now. Check out in the archive, archive. Right? 952. That's it. Clear? Yeah, it has been moved from 51 to 50. Yes. Yes. All the files got moved now. There is no, there are no CSV files because we have moved, we yeah. have just mentioned MV rather than CP. Yes. Clear? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now what we have to do is, so the basic thing is here, we, now we have understood how do you read the set of files in a given location. So now the basic thing yeah. is before moving the file, before moving the files, we have to load the file into our staging table. That is what we have to do it. Yeah. Understood. Okay. So then how do you do it? We need to call our control file. We need yes. to call the SQL loader program. So can we call SQL loader from the Unix shell script? No, I don't, I don't have an idea. We can call. Okay. okay. So we can call Unix shell script or even your SQL program also from the Unix. Okay. Okay. Now we'll just close this one. I'll just create one more. Yeah. Copy. Close. Close. Yeah. Or maybe I can just get this one better. Okay. XXIF GL program dot PROG. Okay. Now here, what we want to do, we need to make first of all, same, same logic, no difference in this logic, okay? So I'll just go here. Now this is a place where I will keep my GL data. Target directory, this is my target directory, and this is my inbound directory. Which are the files which are with the, better I'll mention agl.star csv. Now, what are we doing here? Echo file name copy. Here I just mentioned copy. We can just mention either MV. It will just move it, right? Okay. Now, then what yes. I'm doing here? Simply very simple. SQL loader followed by apps slash apps control is equal to control file name followed by 
data is called dollar f dollar f is nothing but the yeah. csv file our variable yeah csv file that's it only thing is you're just calling okay. the sql order directly sql ldr command there's nothing special just mention your sql sql ldr that's it okay okay and other easier thing is if you observe one assume that like once you have performed this all copy operation and calling the loader file the next thing is just need to mm -hmm. invoke your pl sql program right so here i'm just calling the sql program sql plus hyphen s followed by username password and then here need to i need to mention my yes. program name exec that's it yeah yes hmm. one minute invoking pl sql procedure right yeah that one hmm. so already we have written that code yeah it's very difficult to remember this one because we we use rarely right so it's very difficult to remember mm -hmm. this is how it looks like okay the only thing is we like uh, here we just need to be very careful while you mention the program name that's it read the file read the file call call the sql order perform this until unless you have you until unless you finish all the files once you finish processing of all the files then call the call the wrapper program that's it that bracket that wrapper program has to perform all the remaining logic remaining logic yeah understood yes yeah So this is a this is like this particular logic can apply to anywhere. Whenever you remember, whenever you get a requirement to process dynamic files, this is one of the best thing you can use it. Okay. Think again. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Sure. Yeah, like invoking PL SQL procedure, you have written already, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, may I may I can see that uh, yeah. procedure once? Leave it. See, it doesn't matter which procedure, right? You just need to understand the syntax. What I'm saying is, understand the syntax first. So here, these all things you have to ex okay. see. Whatever you've mentioned here, see, leave over this one, right? One minute. I'll just show you. Okay. Now let us say. Hmm. Let us write our own procedure, okay, and call it first. Understand the basic okay, stuff okay. about how do you call a PL SQL program or any C. uh yeah pl sql program from the unix that's what we have to understand now isn't it hmm. Hmm. here we'll see okay replace processor okay i'll just create one more table i'll just create a table okay sorry now the next thing is insert into table values p underscore id this is it okay okay this my procedure sure so before invoking that just validate whether it is how it is working exec okay it got executed check out the data yes. in the table we got one record cool now the thing is we'll yes, understand yes. now we have to understand how can you call how can you call a pl sql program from unix shell script so for that very simple yeah sql plus command hyphen s followed by username password then followed by these all the things then mention your program name that's it mention your okay. program program yeah so here i'll just mention mention dollar 
dollar one is nothing but while executing your program if you mention some arguments that will get passed to your program i'll show you that okay okay i'll go with unix program okay i'll just say pl sql underscore unix yeah sh okay i don't want to register this as concurrent program not required okay okay this concept is not that much small but goes on you know the number of example goes on anyways yeah so change mode triple seven did you copy or not yeah. okay uh, i think we are not in that location ls minus ld okay yeah is it done yeah it's done yeah now so now okay now here i'll just say i'll just say 7 now i'm passing our argument the value is 7 execute this yes now it has printed invoking pl sql procedure wrapper and now check out your table whether it has a, having the record with value 7 in the serial number or not got it yeah yes yes that's it now let us say got it 100 again check it out 100 done yes done so this is this much easy to call mm. a pl sql program from unix now we know the process right we can just it can be any procedure or it can be anything one more very much important thing is like here i mentioned the i hard coded the password of apps but generally in the real time you will not get the you should not hard code the password of your apps but how do you do it the basic thing is okay before understanding that let us you know like uh, do one more program or maybe we can just continue the existing program where is our uh, first this one yeah this was the first yes, program right but so what you do is let yes. us just print print these things there are five arguments you have to print dollar 1 2 3 okay 4. just print these five arguments five. like this will understand what exactly i am referring to number 31 yeah i'll just cancel this one What you got? Yeah, let's go. Apps, apps. One ID number and three the real like that. Yeah. Request ID number. Yeah. Got it. The fifth argument yes. is your request ID. Nine two zero. Yes. Fifth argument. The fourth argument is your yes, username. Five. Fourth argument is username. Yes. This one I don't remember. It's user ID, I guess. Not even. No, no. It's not user ID. Mm. It's not user ID. User ID won't be this much long. It could be session ID, I guess. Maybe. Yeah, I think so. Not session ID. Mm. My user ID won't be this much long, right? Oh, correct, boss. user yes. id yeah user id user name user ID. concurrent program id and this is your database stuff right so after yes. hello shell yes. script yes. clear yes yes clear are you after shell script hello yes. shell script 1 2 3 4 mm -hmm. which argument it is referring i think dollar 2 i guess dollar 1 is dollar 1 is empty i guess dollar 1 generally mm -hmm. it has to print your program name i guess something so dollar 2 is our user this password and username right your database username, username password. And password okay yes. so what we have to do is here while invoking your pl sql program just mention dollar 2 that's it don't mention the hard coded stuff okay that's how the logic is sure okay 
and now let us say if you want to pass assume that now i want to pass mm -hmm. like a program a parameter to this my concurrent program unix shell script concurrent program i want to pass a parameter what you have to do just see here very simple concurrent program right now let us say i'll just have one parameter here p name 10 character enter your name okay now i want to print it what i can do I'll just say the name is dollar six that's it yeah okay yes Okay, let's see. Mm, no, no, something wrong. Hmm. Something wrong. So, so one is username password. This one is username password. Okay. Yeah. One is user password. And what was two? User. User ID. user ID, username, then request ID. Okay. Now fifth yes. one is the parameter. Parameter. Yeah. Parameter name. Yeah. Fifth one is a parameter. <clears throat> parameter starts from dollar five. And other one is. Yeah. So now I remember that zero stands for the program name okay okay hopefully it's been a long time i worked on this so mm -hmm. <clears throat> got it Yes. This is for zero is a this zero mm -hmm. one two three four. So first of so as the index starts from zero, the first five arguments are for, are yours, like uh, the seeded shell script related or EB is related stuff, and the custom parameter starts from dollar five dollar five right? Yeah. Zero to yes. four zero to four predefined parameters. Dollar five it starts from your normal parameters whichever you pass from your concurrent program stuff. Mm -hmm. Clear. Yes. Now what yeah. we can do now if you want to call the PL SQL program the one which I have written just now same thing I'll just copy mm -hmm. the same here Here we are writing dollar five right? Uh, That's apps it. One, like, yeah, uh, so instead of this one I need to mention dollar one Dollar one yes dollar one no need of followed by now I want yes. to pass the parameter right dollar five. I'll just pass yes. dollar five here Yes That's it. Very simple right? Yes. You are moving the file. Re-execute and just see the difference. I think one more issue we may face because, like uh, the database mm -hmm. one which we have uh, considered, that was that requires you know, this one, right? Serial number, which is a kind of stuff, right? Like, uh, yeah. Let me change yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, done. So this is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
start from yes not next val okay yes yeah i'll just set p underscore name i'll just change the value also yes no one more Uh, here uh, ID we have one more okay. 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 No, it, yes, now it's done. Yes. Huh? Okay. Yes, got it. Now. So here, pass the character. Now copy the file. file. Re-execute this one. That's it. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. Mm. It must be declared. So the problem is mm. single quotes. Yeah. There's a character, right? Single quotes. That's the issue. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Yeah, got it. That's it. So now we have understood yeah. how do you process the file, how do you copy, how do you uh, invoke this particular one, and the parameters of your initial script. So those particular after file after this index four, whatever the parameters which you mentioned, those becomes your custom parameters. Yes. Clear. Yes. Okay, so what we do is in the next session, we'll just consider about a PL SQL logic. We'll just try to work on mm -hmm. maybe AR received or whatever the things, maybe sales order or a PO. Few things we'll just okay. consider. Okay. Yes. And today, what we have discussed in this session, like uh, may I get a step by step what to do, like some, some explanation, two to three minutes explanation on that so that I can be well remembered. What we have discussed today is a generic general thing, it is not specific to any. See, the basic thing, what, no, no. Uh, what yeah, I, I mean, like, uh, see, the basic concept of today's is like uh, understanding the Unix functionalities from the EBS perspective. So, what we have learned first, okay, the first thing is like a simple shell script program, right? We just understood very simple shell script program. <laughs> then, next thing is, yes, processing files using shell script. We have, we have discussed this. Yes. Next thing is invoking PL SQL program from shell script. Next thing is yes. Understanding parameters of Unix shell script of uh, shell you know shell script which is a concurrent program which is yeah. registered as concurrent program. These four things we discussed today. Yes. Clear or? Okay, then. Yeah, I got it, got it. So I'll go through that. First, okay. learn, first, yeah. first try to understand how do you execute. Don't try to register the Unix shell script directly. First of all, just brush up your Unix skills. Then concentrate on registering them as concurrent program and all those three minutes part. First thing is understanding your shell yes. script. Try to write, try to learn about, you know, like uh, the normal if conditions, loops, and some, you know, like a seeded parameter, seeded, uh, no, what I mean to say, like, a, uh, what do you call, like a yes. time date variables, right? Like this one, global variables, I can say. Global variables or yeah. something like that. And some yeah. set of file related properties, like LS, MKDIR, these all things, AR change mode, these all things, you have to learn it. Definitely. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll learn first the commands, then I'll go through that your session once. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I'll start doing. 
Sure. Okay. Like, do you have any if, uh, like uh, uh, notes, uh, some on commands? I should have. I I think I have one PPT on that. I'll forward that. That will be very helpful to me, please. Okay. Yeah, sure. Sure. Thank. Thank you.